Aidan Walker has published a trilogy of books over the past few years, and I'm going to offer a peek inside each of them. They are Six Ways, Weaving Fate, and Changeling. They were published over a period of a few years and are all quite recent. The first two books are about the same length, while the third is significantly longer. As always, it pains me to report when books don't have an index. It was really helpful in the first book. Too bad about the last two. The first two books are illustrated, but not the third, although you could argue illustrations wouldn't have been quite as valuable for that last book anyway. The number of chapters, depending on how you define chapter, varies wildly, as the first book is many morsels of information, the second is more focused on one theme, and the third book's core consists of 55 distinct qualities of a witch, definitely boosting the chapter count. Alright, let's start off with Six Ways, Approaches and Entries for Practical Magic. The six ways of the title represent the four cardinal directions, plus up and down. North, south, east, and west are paired with elements, and up and down point to different levels of reality. The cardinal directions have correspondences on our physical reality we can call the middle world. If you've done the LBRP, you should recognize east is air, west is water, south is fire, and north as earth. Then you can add up and down, pointing to the world above and the underworld. So, this is a reality map. Maps of reality are useful, but inevitably show just part of the picture. These six ways make up a map of reality that can help us pinpoint various kinds of the others we learn in Chapter 8. Others in the Middle World might be among the most helpful, but the most dangerous. They know the territory, but we can easily trespass on their turf. Others are basically spirits who operate in something Aidan Wachter calls the field. We're in the field, so are non-human spirits, and the field will listen to us. The other worlds, above and below us, are truly non-physical, at least from our point of view. An animistic worldview suggests the value of a symbiotic relationship, but be clear and directed in how you express your intentions. Eden Wachter makes offerings, but to specific spirits. As he puts it, I reiterate my intentions through speech, sigils, petitions, vessels, talismans, ritual, or other types of magical focal points, keeping my mind clear and focused. And as you can tell, he provides a lot of those practices of speech, sigils, petitions, vessels, talismans, rituals, or other types of magical focal points. So, what do I think? Well, I think it's a brilliant and comprehensive book about dirt sorcery, as Aidan Walker puts it, that aims to be efficient, unpretentious, and practical. Highly recommended. Not that it wasn't rough going at first. I probably read the book too soon in my magical explorations. Angels and archangels and visualizations, such as the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, are relatively unthreatening to my worldview. But the non-corporeal denizens in the middle world, whether spirits of the dead or otherwise, required a bigger jump for me. No fault of Eden Walker that I wasn't quite ready to take the leap. After further exploring, including reading Jason Miller's Consorting with Spirits and watching a lot of videos, including podcast interviews, I think I get it more. Again, this is not the author's fault, but a reflection of the route my views needed to develop. In fact, if I could have one book on magic, if I ended up on a desert island, this would be a strong contender for its clear writing, comprehensive coverage, sincerity, and its to-the-point expounding of dirt sorcery. So, again, I really do recommend this book. In a way, weaving fate, hypersigils, changing the past, and telling true lies is easier to summarize, as it's mostly about writing your future as if it were your past. The idea of hypersigils came to Aidan Walker when he tried sending letters to himself describing events he wanted to happen. The method seemed to work. So this is a pretty single-focused book, albeit with a generous helping of some background information. As he puts it about his first book, I wrote Six Ways as a wide-open handbook of highly effective magical approaches covering a lot of ground or tools in a small space. As for this book, 
It's focused on the application of a small set of tools that we will explore in greater depth. There are three tools he gets into for manipulating our sense of time. The Black Book, the Fever Stone, and the Corridor. With the Black Book, the user journals a hypersigil, which helps to reinterpret the past and create a particular future. Meanwhile, the user imagines a corridor of endless possibilities and checks some of them out to see if they're a good fit and to reinterpret the past. Finally, there is the Fever Stone. The user starts with a physical stone and consecrates it, then uses it to help get rid of the psychic baggage of genetic and spiritual ancestors. Part of the process takes place in a visualized or otherworld temple. The Fever Stone practice, in particular, was communicated to Aiden Wachter by spirit allies. That point was one of many reminders that Aiden Wachter's distance from ceremonial magic doesn't keep him distant from spirits. Also, instead of going the Buddhist route of escaping dependent origination, he's trying to transform our malleable realities, causes, and conditions to our advantage. Revising the story that we tell ourselves helps to revise our approach to reality, and thence reality itself. Aidan Wachter quotes the journaling of a perhaps imaginary sorceress as X explores possibilities, sees what results manifest and how she feels about them, and then changes direction. Although firmly practical in aim, Aidan Wachter opens the book with background chapters on his philosophical approach in a longer form than he could in six ways. Since I haven't tried the practice he describes, I can't say much about its personal effect on me, but this is a book I do want to return to, not just for the hypersigils, but for Aidan Wachter's philosophy. As for the title and cover illustration, Aidan Wachter points to a passage from another writer, Jan Fries. In Nordic philosophy, fate was considered a weaving that was influenced by all living beings. People could influence fate and shape it to some extent, which is a long way from the fatalism which requires people to sit still and suffer. And yes, sideways is spelled properly. It seems to refer to Seder, S-E-I-D-R, a form of Norse magic. So back to the Weaving Fate book. My verdict? Solid writing, intriguing ideas, lots of rituals, and an extensive look into the author's philosophical background make Weaving Fate a book I want to explore in a lot more detail sometime soon in the future past. And here's the latest book, Changeling, A Book of Qualities. The core of the book consists of 55 qualities of a witch, with each quality accompanied by questions, practices, or both. The author's spirit allies came up with the title and topic of this book. Aidan Wachter thinks changeling is a nod to that feeling of otherness so many of us have. About witchcraft in particular, he says it's a practice of resistance to the control of mind, action, and belief by outside forces. The witch is fully aware of their own agency, sovereignty, and right to choose their path. Eden Wachter likes to emphasize practical magic over philosophizing, though he's pretty good at the philosophy bit too. Importantly, practical magic doesn't mean it's just about material gain, it's also about self-improvement. Otherwise, we're ruled by our own impulses and consumed by our less inspired of emotions, such as fear and anger. After the Book of Qualities and its 55 points, there's a pretty long praxis section for more skills and practices not discussed earlier. For instance, he talks about invoking elements, spell work and practice, written charms, enchanting a ring, and creating a talisman. It's probably helpful that the author used to be a talismanic jeweler. Aidan Wachter's general approach is to believe spirits or spirit-like powers are at work, and even if not objectively true, it can be useful for you and your work. And by the way, the author in fact does believe it to be true, for his purposes at least. So all of his books are well-structured and well-written, but uh, there's something particularly useful with how he organized Changeling, with the 55 qualities at the core and more practices at the end. So I'd be inclined to suggest reading the books in this order. Start with Changeling, proceed to Six Ways, and then try your hand at Weaving Fate. Though if hypersigils really intrigue you, feel free to start off with it. As for getting more information, he's a great interview subject, so I suggest just going to YouTube and searching for his name. 
He's closed his social media accounts and pared down his website, so for now you'll likely have to rely on material that's a little bit old, but not radically so. And that's it for my quick look at Aidan Wachter's trilogy of fabulous books on magic and witchcraft. Your comments are welcome.